an overflow of hard-hitting strand damage in PvE, and the only fusion rifle in Destiny 2 that hits 100 range and 100 handling right off the spawn in PvP. This is Nox Perennial 5, the high-impact strand fusion rifle that I was so wrong about. I made the mistake that many others did and wrote Nox off due to the terrible base stats and lack of speed perks, but I stuck with it, farmed every role I could think of from Master Lost Sectors, and went zero to hero on Nox Perennial 5. Y'all, this is the range of Glacioclasm at the speed of a slick draw Aramite without any of the accuracy downsides. So let's talk stats, perks, and then the god rolls to get there in both PvE and PvP. Nox Perennial 5 is one of only two high impacts in the kinetic slot. These fusions have a 960 charge time, fire 5 bolts of burst, and require 3 to 4 of those bolts to land in PvP, depending on the opponent's resilience level. 3 bolts through 9 resil, and 4 bolts for 10. Now, the stats on Nox are going to start rough, but stick with me. Nox Perennial 5 doesn't just have bad stats, it has the worst stats of any high impact frame in Destiny 2. The other kinetic slot high impact, Arvindil FR6, was already the worst high impact in the game, and rather than making up for it, Bungie dropped a fusion that at first glance looks even worse. I mean, just look at all that red. The lowest range stat, the lowest handling at 18, the lowest reload at 16, and even the lowest recoil direction at 65. This isn't just a bad look for PvP with that low range stat, but also for PvE with those handling and reload stats. Now, for other fusions like Arvindil, this would be the end of the story, but the perks on Nox start to turn things around. Envious Assassin, Fragile Focus, Threat Detector, Elemental Capacitor, Controlled Burst, and Kickstart. There's a lot here, and while you can use these perks on top of the bad stats to create knockoffs of the fusion greats, I want to show you how to use them to fix the stats and create something entirely new. Immediately, everyone's eyes will be drawn to the classic PvE perks, so we'll fly by that real quick before we get to what blew my mind in PvP. Controlled Burst is the obvious choice for the fourth column, nothing comes close. A 20% damage buff and 10% faster charge time for just hitting your first burst. Collective Action gives 20% too, but only for 7 seconds after an elemental pickup, so it just doesn't compare to the ease of control bursts unless your subclass build is just living for it. Hatchling needs precision kills to really work right, Elemental Capacitor doesn't bring any damage, Wellspring is a super low amount of energy back, and Kickstart requires too much time to activate in PvE, so controlled burst it is. You add all that damage onto strand abilities like unraveling rounds, and you're packing a punch whenever you need it. For that third column, I know Envious Assassin is ultimately the desired perk. It works great for clearing adds with your primary and swapping to a massive magazine for majors or boss damage but I do want to present a small case for one other perk. Yet we've got lead from gold if you struggle with ammo, but we've also got threat detector. And this is the only high impact fusion in the game that can currently get it. Outside of charge time, handling is the weakness of high impacts. It just feels bad to slowly pull out and put away these heavy fusions. And if you're using this fusion to clear large enemies off the field while you're blazing in on something like Banner of War Strand Titan with unraveling rounds, Threat Detector is kind of awesome. You can get up to 100 handling and 81 reload speed without touching that fourth column, and it feels pretty great paired with the damage and speed of controlled burst. Something to consider. Now the real surprise, PvP. I can't believe it. I was so close to a not recommend, and you can see that in my fusion rifle ranking video. I put Nox near the very bottom of any fusion rifle in the game, but I was wrong. I finally found what sets it apart. Sure, you can make some knockoff builds with it, say you didn't get that max range kickstart glacioclasm you wanted. Using fragile focus and kickstart, you can recreate that, but glacio could hit 98 range without fragile focus and so it could run kickstart with under pressure. If you try to run under pressure and kickstart on Nox, you're left with some terrible handling and a max range of 80. You'd honestly be better off with Iota Draconis since it'll have better aim assist and a silent pre-charge. What about just a solid under pressure roll? Well, Nox looks even worse this way since Loaded Question runs under pressure with amazing aim assist, and then Wizard Rebuke and Glacioclasm top it by combining under pressure with successful warm up or high impact reserves. Nox can fill all those roles fine if you don't have them on other weapons, but it shines when you max the range and double down on handling. As we just talked about for PvE, high impacts are sluggish, and I fix this with my Slick Draw Aramite build but your shots have to be on 
point. On controller, you had reticle friction to help with that, but on mouse and keyboard, you, it required perfection. Here's where Nox comes in. I'm not talking threat detector. You can hit 100 handling with threat detector, but you do not want to be within 15 meters of two opponents on a slow charging fusion rifle. You're just asking for the L. Kind of like not being subscribed to this YouTube channel. Ooh, threat detected. Wait, wait. That was bad. Okay, threat detector is bad. We're, we're back on track. So instead, we're running fragile focus in the third column for the plus 20 range, an elemental capacitor with an arc subclass in the fourth column for the plus 50 handling. Between these two perks, you've got a total of 70 stat boost before you even hit any of your barrel or mag perks. No other fusion can get this combo. So now, without anything else, you're already at 68 handling, which feels so good on a high impact frame. It's so different, it feels like you've got to rewire your brain with how it feels versus the damage you're putting out. And we're not even done yet. If you get amplified, which I remind you can be done instantly on a Warlock with Getaway Artist Exotic, you've got another 40 handling with a 095 times ready stow duration multiplier. You've now got the speed of slick draw without any accuracy downside before you even spec out the barrel, magazine, and masterwork. This is crazy. Now knowing all that, you can take a handling roll two different directions. One way is to max out your range. Full bore, projection, and a range masterwork added onto fragile focus puts you at 100 range. So max range with 68 handling at base, and then if you get amplified, you're at 100 range and 100 handling. We've got slick draw at home, and it feels incredible. Okay, so say you don't want to lean into getting amped. You can just lean into handling and let fragile focus and projection fuse carry the range. With fluted barrel and a handling masterwork, you're at 93 handling and 75 range off the bat. My slick draw Aramite was only at 81 range, so this is definitely an option if you don't like relying on any subclass buffs. Now, I think you should lean into getting amp because you've got to be on an arc subclass for elemental capacitor anyways, but no matter which way you roll this perk combo, you cannot get this balance of range and handling on any other hard hitting fusion rifle. So if you see fragile focus and elemental capacitor drop together, save that roll. I also have to mention the origin trait, wildcard, that will spawn three Telesto bolts to scatter around any kill you get. In PvE, it's a nice addition to unraveling rounds during ad clear, but in PvP, it creates some hilarious cleanups. I've kind of reversed course on this because in my initial preview of Nox during the Ultimate Fusion Guide, I was really annoyed with how the wildcard submunitions that spawn would destroy my strand tangles before I could pick them up. I still think that's annoying, but now that I'm leaning into thread lanes and unraveling rounds instead, wildcard is great. It's not enough damage to rely on, but it has become a pretty significant bonus to cleaning up crowds of enemies. I cleared out three opponents in this clip here at B flag, and when I swapped my sidearm for the fourth, the wild card bolts did half the work. Cami Cakes also wisely pointed out recently that this perk is great to hold down a resin trials or competitive, so quite a few things going for it, but I'd still be careful running this if you're on a tangle build. Okay, but what specific god rolls are we looking for on Nox Perennial 5? For the most part, in PvE, my suggestion is pretty typical. Charge Time Masterwork, Fluted Barrel, Accelerated Coils, Envious Assassin, and Controlled Burst. That said, I am holding onto my control burst roll with Threat Detector 2. I think it works really well for builds where you're in the middle of the action and have that 100 handling and plus 60 reload speed proc'd. Plus, here's the thing, Envious Assassin is not always the play. A lot of ad clear builds are ability based. Those kills aren't going to refuel Envious Assassin, you need weapon kills. And so Envious could be a dead perk depending on your build. So if you see Threat Detector drop, just think about it for a second before you auto-delete. In PvP, you've got options for your god roll Nox Perennial 5. The main one is maxing your range and handling. Nothing else can do it, and anything else you try to do with the fusion rifle will just be a knockoff of what another high impact can do better. So let's max some stats. Well, almost. We're for sure looking for Fragile Focus for the plus 20 range and Elemental Capacitor on Arc for the plus 50 handling, but while I could go Range Masterwork Full Bore and Projection Fuse to hit 100 range with Fragile Focus, I'm actually going to recommend Hammer Forge for the barrel. This is the role I've got and have been loving because it still hits 95 range while maintaining 68 handling when not amplified. Then when I do get amplified, I'm at 95 range and 100 handling. Hitting unreal shots down range and having the option to quick swap to other weapons is just perfect. 
I can't recommend this roll enough if you just want your weapons to feel good. Outside of that, you've also got your knockoff rolls. I think keeping the 95 range with range masterwork, hammer forge, projection fuse, and fragile focus, and then pairing it with kickstart is an okay glacioclasm competitor. The main problem is you're giving up under pressure to keep up with the range of glacioclasm in that third column. Also, Kickstart just isn't what it used to be on high impacts. It can't break the range cap barrier anymore due to the Kickstart nerf, and when piled on top of the damage falloff nerf, you can't even stack Radiant and Surge mods to break the range cap against 10 Razil. Pretty crazy how hard they put the hammer down on that trick. Every other build on Nox is just going to be a fill-in for a different high impact you didn't get. I don't think there is a specific standout, but I'll say any combination of either Extended Barrel, Full Bore, or Hammer Forge with a Charge Timer Range Masterwork, Under Pressure or Fragile Focus with Elemental Capacitor or Kickstart will be okay. But like I said, they're just stand-ins for better fusions. My only advice if you do go for one of these rolls is to not lean into Threat Detector for PvP. Your ideal engagement range should be 15 to 20 meters. If Threat Detector is proccing for you with a slow charging fusion in PvP, you're playing it wrong. So, in PvE, Nox Perennial 5 is going to struggle against the fast-firing scatter signal that can go in the same slot. There's just no way around that. But I think Nox will shine as a tool to whip out against heavy hitters in the the midst of ad clear. In PvP, there's truly nothing like it. I do have to warn you, it's a bit of a glass cannon. The moment Fragile Focus turns off on you, you can feel it. And I had a few moments where I felt my accuracy and Amos's cone dip out on me when I lost the perk. That said, the combination of Fragile Focus with Arc Elemental Capacitor is wild, particularly when you get amplified. Aramite can give you the feel, but it doesn't give you the range or auto aim. Then Glacioclasm gives you the range, but not as much handling or aim assist. There are even other fusions that can hit max range and max handling for a few seconds thanks to killing win or steady hands, but you've got to get a kill with the weapon before those will proc, and it doesn't last near as long. I was wrong about Nox Perennial 5, and if I were to rank it again, I'd place it right next to Aramite. If you value handling, it would be even higher. This has been Lego Flash, until next time, GG.